Welcome to New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church Sunday Service. Under the dynamic leadership of Reverend Dr. Lorenzo Neal, we are located at 2202 Decatur Street in the city with soul, Jackson, Mississippi. Join us online at Facebook, YouTube, or our website, newbetheljacksonms.org. We are a church where God is our Father, Christ is our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit is our Comforter, and humanity is our family. Here are this week's announcements and weekly ministry opportunities. If the stress from the pandemic is affecting you, let our pastoral counseling ministry help you. Licensed and trained professional counselors are available by appointment. Join us Tuesdays at noon for Bible study with Dr. Neal, streamed live on our church Facebook page. Gain insight into scripture that will bless you throughout the week. Sunday school each Sunday at 9 a.m. by way of teleconference. Call 701-802-5157, enter code 412-1360. Our mission is to minister to the social, spiritual, economical, and physical development of all people. Our vision is to be a church where every person feels loved, welcome, and accepted, where God's word is explained and experienced on every level for every person, when every person strives to be relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. Welcome to Sunday service. Thank you for joining us. Let's join the service in progress now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. And welcome to Sunday service at New Bethel. As you can see, I am not in the pulpit of do Bethel this morning. I am in Orlando, Florida. We have just concluded the 51st quadrennial session of the General Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Wonderful conference. Wonderful things happen. God moved. And we're just excited about what God is about to do in African Methodism. We have elected four new um, Episcopal leaders, new bishops, and several general officers and uh, i want to give my uh, commendations and congratulations to those newly elected general officers the reverend dr marcus henderson the reverend Dr. dr john green the reverend dr uh, james miller the reverend dr marcellus a norris the reverend dr j augustine uh here from the eighth district uh, elected to the judicial council um attorney jeffrey cooper Jimmy Williams, to, uh, Billy Ngumbi, and Monice Crawford. They were elected uh, to the Judicial Council as well as general officers of the church. And to our four new Episcopal leaders, mothers and fathers in our church, um, by order of election, we have uh, uh, the Right Reverend uh, Sylvester Beeman, uh, the 139th elected and consecrated Bishop of African Methodism, the Reverend, Right Reverend um, Marvin Clyde Zanders II, the 140th elected and consecrated Bishop of African Methodism, the Reverend, uh, my friend and sister, the Reverend Francine Brookins, the 141st elected and consecrated uh, Bishop of African Methodism and the Reverend, the Right Reverend Frederick A. Wright, the 142nd elected and consecrated Bishop of African Methodism. Join me in giving God praise for their election. They've received their assignments and we will be praying for them as they serve this present age and our great Zion. I also uh, want to um, give and welcome to the 8th Episcopal District, our new presiding prelate, the Reverend 
the right Reverend Stafford Wicker. He is no stranger to the 8th Episcopal District. Um, he is from the 8th Episcopal District. That is his home. And he is returning home to serve our great Episcopal District. And we welcomed him. And we hope that um, he will have the opportunity to come and share and worship with us at New Bethel. And I'm very excited about what God has been doing. God has even been gracious to me as he has afforded me to be elected to the preliminary inquiry committee of our great Zion. And I'm just grateful and humbled by his divine providence in allowing me to be a part of the great workings of our faith community. So, um, like I said, uh, it's been a long day. I had uh, we had planned services, uh, something to do this morning, and it did not quite work out as we had hoped. So we are doing this and we do pray that you would receive what we have and um we're going to enter into a moment of prayer in just a moment. And I do want you to pray for our beloved Sister Alice Horn, who is hospitalized. Please keep her in your prayers and all others that I may not be aware of. As we go to the Lord in prayer, please remember them. Call their names that the Lord will be heard, will hear their faintest cry and answer by and by. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you because you are our God. You are the savior of our lives. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. We thank you in this moment, Father God. Now, as we prepare to receive what you will speak to us and speak through us, Lord God, open our understanding, eyes of our understanding, let that be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of our calling and the inheritance we have with all believers. And this your servant acts, O God, that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you indeed are my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Again, we bless God today for what he is doing and what he will do for us through our great Zion. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, we're going to start reading at verse number 14 and read down to the end. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. Then it happened as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent which David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Further, he distributed to all the people, to all the multitude of Israel, both to men and women, a cake of bread and one of dates and one of raisins to each one. Then all the people departed each to his house. But when David returned to bless his household, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel distinguished himself today. He uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servants' maids as one of the foolish ones shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will be more lightly esteemed than this and will be humble in my own eyes. But with the maids of whom you have spoken with them, I will be distinguished. Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. And if I could just speak to you just for a few moments give you a little meditation something to meditate on for the week it would be from the topic recovery done right recovery done right in our text we see king david and his entourage having recovered the ark of the covenant of god 
from Obed Edom and had having having recovered it and brought it into his newly established capital of Jerusalem he aligned himself in the capacity not just as a king but also as a member of the people of Israel he aligned himself not only as a king but also as a priest of God he aligned himself not only as a king and as a priest and as a member of the uh, the household of Israel but he aligned himself as a praiser someone who understood the value of the recovery that they were experiencing if you have to you have to understand the ark had been displaced for a number of years the the worship of god had all but evaporated and people had become desolate in their admiration and seeking of god at one point they were going to the prophets and they were going to the priests and making sacrifices uh and and, and then they just kind of got nonchalant about their worship they had god uh content in their existence and the extent of who they understood themselves to be but David was not like everybody else David even after assuming the role of king understood the value of God's presence among God's people I want you to understand he understood the value of God's presence among God's people I, I I think we have lost the sense of God's presence among God's people there there was a recovery that had gone forth and there was many instances and, and situations and mishaps and missteps that took place in the process of bringing about that recovery but David did not give up he stood firm and he gathered the men together and he went forth and said we are bringing the home we are bringing the ark of God back to where it belongs to the people of God I wish we had somebody I wish I had somebody here who could understand that sometimes you just gotta let go and get out of your place of complacency and go back to the house where God dwells you need to go back to the place where God dwells you need to bring the ark you need to bring the thing that uh, 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 is acquainted with God that brings in the presence of God you need to bring it back and let it be established in your place they had recovered the ark and David had assembled worshipers and praisers as this custom when it goes to temple worship or worship in overall in ancient worship they in ancient Israel they would bring together the singers they would bring together the trumpeters they would bring together all of this wonderful musicians to make a joyful noise to the Lord and they assembled themselves and as the priests were leading the the march of the ark of the covenant to the city of jerusalem david's praise team were in full effect they they were making a joyful noise to the lord and, and david at first was uh, uh dressed in his royal garb and and he was even though he had the the garments of the priesthood he was dressed in his royal garb as the processional went forward but the the more they went forward the the, the further they they processed the, the more he sensed the greatness of god the, the more he sensed the greatness of god the more he began to give God praise the more he began to give God praise the more animated he became the more animated he became the more uh the more he become he got out of his own elements and out of his own self and he began to just praise and the bible says that David danced before the Lord with all his might I, I wish i had somebody here i i know i got somebody here who's in the midst of some crazy situation i know there's somebody here who's in the midst of uh circumstances and situations that the only thing that you have left on your side is a praise 
the only thing that you have left on your mouth is a praise. Uh, you, 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 you're seeing what how God is moving. You're seeing how God is processing in other people's lives and through the lives of the world, and and and, and you, you, you're praising God with them, and you, you're saying, I know it's not my time right now, but I'm going to get my praise on right now. Hallelujah. David begins to praise. He, he he praises out of his royal garments. And the only thing he has left is the linen ephod of the priest. See, see, first David's dancing was an act of recovery worship. David's dancing was an act of recovery worship. It was more than excitement for bringing the the back the sacred relic of the ark but it was also a recovery of worship based on the god of the holy ark oh my god it, it was a recovery of worship and praise based on the god of the ark and the covenant that the god made with the people who the ark was given to my god i feel like preaching this morning it was more than just David dancing with excitement. I, I don't know about you, but every now and then I, I get a little excited when I hear certain move, music and it, it moves me and it makes me move. But but when I sense God's presence and when I sense God's moving in my life, sometimes I can't help myself. I have to open my mouth and I have to give God some praise. Uh, I have to lift my hands and throw my head back and shout hallelujah. I have to begin to just move and and dance before the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't have to have Luther Vandross. I don't have to have Earth, Wind, and Fire. I don't have to have Frankie Beverly and Maze to dance. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. And I just get my praise on. I don't know where you are right now, wherever you are. You just need to get your praise on right now. Come on, somebody. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. David's dancing was an act of recovery worship. David danced before the Lord with all his might and, and he danced not because he felt good about what was happening. He danced not because he was the king and was celebrating his great victory cover, recovering the ark. He danced not because he had all these people in the back following him and singing and dancing with him. No, he didn't dance to show off. He danced because he knew how God good God was. He danced because he knew God was moving. Moving, huh? And God was bringing about recovery to his people. My God, I feel this thing. The Bible says that David was dancing before the Lord. And then after entering into the city, uh, I, I, even though his his wife looked at him and saw how he was behaving and despised him and, and belittled him and thought less of him, he, he still continued to dance on into the city. And when they got into the city, they got to the place that was prepared for the ark. And, and David allowed the priest to do their work. David, the, even though he was dressed in priestly garments, he, he relinquished the duties of the priest to serve the God that they were called to serve and, and, and as they established the ark in its resting place uh, David began to worship again but this time he wasn't worshiping in dance he wasn't worshiping in praise he was worshiping as a priest now now there are texts who there are texts who will say that David was functioning as a priest and he was not functioning as a priest because he had been called to the priest because that was a reserved occupation. But he was functioning in as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, and like uh, uh, the original language says, like Melchizedek, uh, because Melchizedek came and blessed Abraham and Abraham gave the tithe to Melchizedek. And as he gave the tithe to Melchizedek, the king of Shalom. The king of Salem. Uh, G, uh, now David had reclaimed and recovered that same area, reclaimed and recovered that same tradition. And David received the ark after the likeness of Melchizedek. He was in Jerusalem and he received the ark as the order of Melchizedek, just like Melchizedek received uh, Abram's 
offering and tithe, David received the ark. And he go, he tells the people to go ahead and begin to serve. And as they bless the work of God, the Bible says that everybody who was there was able to receive something from the blessing. Everybody, uh, everybody, man and woman received cake, uh, bread, and dates and raisins. And everybody was blessed. This, the first thing we taught, said that David's dancing was an act of re recovery worship. But this thing now, David's dancing was an act of recovery service. Recovery service. David's act was an act of worship through recovery of service. Everybody who witnessed David's dancing, they weren't ashamed of him dancing. They probably didn't even understand why he was dancing. All they knew is that their king came in happy. Their king came in shouting. Their king came in rejoicing. And then the king blessed them. Oh my God. I, I want y'all to get this. You may not get your praise right then. You may see somebody else shouting, but don't wait till the battle is over. You better begin to shout now because God is eventually going to bless you. God is eventually going to bless you. Hallelujah. David's dancing was an act of worship and service to the people. And lastly and finally, when David blesses the people, the people go home. The Bible says the people go home. But then David goes home to his family and David has the intention of blessing his family. Only he is caught by the distraction of a wife who had disavowed him, who had been troubled by him, who was this, who had every negative intention by him. And she confronts him and says, you were shameful. You ought to be shamed of yourself. Look at what you did. Uh, you're supposed to be a distinguished man. Huh? You're supposed to be a mighty man of value. You're supposed to be a man of honor and integrity. And look at what you did coming into this city. You had everybody looking at you. You even had these women who, who were not supposed to be looking at you, looking at you. And they were probably desiring you, probably wondering what you could do for them. And, and, and here you are. I'm your wife. And you're the son-in-law of a king. And look at you acting like you're nobody. Look at you acting like you have no home training look at you doing all of this stuff and and you're embarrassing me and david says hold oh, hold up hold up woman I, I i don't know what you i don't know why you mad at me all i had to do was praise all i could do is praise because i understood what god had done for his people i understood how God had brought about us recovery because we were able to reclaim the ark. Just like one lady said, I'm reclaiming my time. Uh, uh, she said that. Uh, David said, we reclaim <coughs> the ark. And David David said, uh, you, you don't understand. You, all you saw was me dancing out of my clothes. All, all you saw was the people and the handmaidens looking and probably lusting after me. But what you did not see is how I knew what God was doing in me huh, and through me. You could not understand the move of God. And, and because you did not understand the move of God, here you are trying to speak ill about my praise. You got to understand, sometimes people will speak ill of your praise if they don't understand why you're praising. <laughs> you don't have to give them a reason. All you got to do is give God a praise. Huh? And David understood that David's dancing led to offense, but that offense may lead to barrenness uh, because Michael did not understand and discounted David's dancing as a delirious act. Huh? God looked upon her with disdain and said, you're not having any children. My Lord have mercy. David's dancing led to offense by his wife. When he came home to bless his house, he was met with all kinds of trouble. Oh, Lord, have mercy, somebody. But God still moved on his behalf. I, I just wanted to say this as a close this morning. We're in the right place for recovery. We're in the right place for God to move on our behalf. And for God to make a way out of no way. We're, we're in the right place, in the right time, in the right setting for God to recover us and restore unto us all the things that the enemy has taken. Oh, my God, I feel a shout coming on to restore unto us all the things the enemy 
had stolen from us. You're in a place of recovery. And when God does a recovery, God does a recovery right. God gives you recovery that you didn't even expect. God surrounds you with an entourage of praisers who understand that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. They, he will place you in a surrounding where all you can do is just dance with all your might uh, and when you dance with all your might God rewards you with recovery amen somebody give God a hand of praise hallelujah hallelujah God is willing to restore to you recovery that you may abound in what he has for you let's pray father just as David led the charge to recover the ark. And just as David joined with the priest and the people in the processional of the ark and danced with all his might, danced out of his royal garments, was despised by his own wife, and yet he still praised you. May we find ourselves in David's recovery. May we have this sense that you are with us, recovering for us all that the enemy has stolen and establishing us in this place of peace and prosperity. Give unto us the hope that you would bring us back and recover us to where you will have us to be. It's our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Beloved, it's extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. And maybe somebody here who doesn't know Jesus in the part of your sins. Right now, I want to take this moment to help you. Though I did not explicitly say the gospel message is that Jesus Christ died and that he rose again and that he is coming again. You want to be ready when he comes. And the only way to be ready to have that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. This is the invitation of Christian discipleship. If you do not know Jesus and the part of your sins, this is your opportunity to know him wherever you are. We extend this invitation to you. And secondly, if you're looking for a home, a place of worship, Virtually or in person, we invite you to join us at New Bethel. We are a church where God is growing and where we are growing in the grace and knowledge of God through Jesus Christ. Where we are all trying to be real, relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving people. And we invite you to join us. If you'd like to do so, simply leave the comment, I want to join New Bethel. Leave that in the comments and we will welcome you to our family of believers. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please leave that comment saying we've accepted Jesus Christ. I've accepted Christ as Savior and Lord. And we will be praying for you and we welcome you into the body of Christ. Amen. Now, as we shift from this moment of meditation and word into our moment of giving, I'm, I'm trying to be quiet. I don't want to wake everybody up. <laughs> But we want to invite you to join with us in our worship through giving this morning at New Bethel. You can give uh, uh, two ways. You can give by way of the physical address of the church um, as well as through Givelify. However the Lord blesses you and enables you to give, we invite you to do so. And we welcome God's blessing upon you. At this time, we invite you to give. Let's bless this offering. Father, we thank you. For thinking and not robbery, to think about us, providing to us the resources to meet the needs of your people that as you have given to us, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, we have been able to be blessings to others in both the local community and the international community. We thank you, God. Now bless these who were giving, Father God. Help them to give not grudgingly or out of necessity, but give cheerfully because you love a cheerful giver. And we thank you here in New Bethel for all that you are allowing us to do. Thank you for your gracious stewards 
who are helping conduct this ministry. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and give as the Lord is allowing you to do so. Amen. Amen. And as I close out this morning, again, we are soliciting prayers on behalf of all our beloved members. I called out the name of Sister Alice Horn. There may be others that I'm unaware of, uh, but we solicit you, uh, invite you to call out their names in your prayer time today and whenever you call on the name of the Lord. Again, we also solicit your prayers on behalf of all our newly elected uh, bishops and uh, general officers of the church as well as our other persons, uh, the general board members of our church, commission members, and committee members of our great Zion. We thank you so much. We thank them so much for the service in advance for the service that they are going to be providing to our great church. And we want to invite you to join us in our weekly activities. We will have Bible study on Tuesday. Tuesdays at noon is when we do our Bible study and I always uh, invite you to join us for that. And Sundays at 9 a.m. we do our Sunday school, church school by way of teleconference. We invite you to join us for that. And until God sees fit for us to meet again, let us pray God's choices, blessings upon you. Now to you, O oh God, you keep us, you save us, you deliver us, bless us uh, as we leave out of this space and this moment of worship, and praise, and preaching into a moment of service and uh, solace in your presence. Go with us and stand by us. May the peace and love of God the Father and of the Son and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always, and the people of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. <laughs>